Okay. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, all right. Hello. Do you want a roll call? Hello. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Mr. Hopkins? Oh, sure. Tom Fricky? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Here. Mr. Redder? Yeah, here, Redden. Mr. N Nelson? I'm here. Mr. Robbins? Here. Mr. Christian? Yeah. Mr. Clark? Here. Leslie Summers? She should be on in a moment, ma'am. Okay, great. All right. Moon Unit? My name's Moon Trent. I'm here. Moon Unit? Moon Trent. They tease They're me They're also about holding, ma'am. I have them connected. Okay, great. Liz Adams? Uh, here. Okay. John Weston? That's all right. Joe Ionello? I'm here for a minute or so. Mr. McCartney? Here. And Miss Gibson? Oh, oh. Right. Hello. 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 Everybody can Hello. take down this Hello. in case you need my assistance. Yeah. Uh, let, let me get the number. Okay, 1-800-225-0233. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay. And your reference number is E like Edward, R like Robert, uh -huh. 43862. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks a lot. Hello. Kim? Yeah. It's Deborah. Oh, hi. Great. Hi. How are you? Very good. Um, everybody, we've got Debbie Gibson on the call Hello. right now. How are you doing? So the basic rules are, I think we'll have time for each of you to ask a couple of questions. And at the, when everyone's gotten their questions in, Debbie can do a generic ID sort of introducing the single. And there should be time, too, to get a couple of customized IDs for each of you. Great. Um, so I'll just call out your names, and if you can each make a point of, you know, introducing yourself and your call letters and what city you're from so Debbie knows who she's talking to. <laughs> and I understand what, uh, from KQ, KQ, you need to go first there? Uh, that, well, yeah, can I enter a record here real quick? Oh, uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, we'll go to someone else first. How about Ken Hopkins? Oh, hi. Oh, hi, how are you doing? Can I introduce a commercial first? Uh, I'm just kidding. Okay, uh, good. Hi, Debbie Gibson, this is uh, Ken Hopkins. Hi, how are you? From Spokane, Washington, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good. Good. Uh, our question was, uh, how long did it take you to record this next album, and what kind of music can we expect to hear from it? Well, it's um, half upbeats and half ballads. There are 16 tracks on it. Uh -huh. And it took me about nine months, so it was kind of like having a baby, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a little, little bit less little painful, bit wasn't it? Sure. Yes, yeah, a lot less painful. <laughs> um, no, but let's see. I, I started it in about January, right when I finished the last tour. And basically Atlantic said to me, you have as long as you want, you know, whenever it's ready, we'll release it. So it was nice to know that I had kind of an unlimited period of time to work. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, great. Uh, we were wondering if you could do a custom ID for us. It just said uh, you're listening to 93 Zoo FM. Hi, I'm Debbie Gibson. You're listening to 93 Zoo FM. Okay. And can we come back and do that at the end so everyone oh, well, can? Well, certainly. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay, great. We're sorry. We didn't mean to. No, that's fine. I'm trying to weasel we're, out we're extra not, time. <laughs> we're being selfish <laughs> pigs. <laughs> I haven't woken up out there yet, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Okay. How about Tom from Colorado Springs? Hi, Tom. Hello. What's your question for me? Uh, oh, are you? Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hello, Debbie. Yeah, hi. Got tones in my ears here. Hello? Hello. Oh, okay. There we go. Question. Uh, could you share your thoughts on Mojo Nixon? <laughs> well, um, actually, I kind of got a big chuckle out of that song, and I wrote a revenge song, but I don't plan on recording it because it's not really worth it, I don't think. Um, all I could say is that I'm a fan of Don Henley, so he should start leaving Don Henley alone, too. And Elvis isn't alive to defend himself, so he should leave him alone, too. So uh, what, what kind of lyrics are in your song that, that you have for the rebuttal? Well, the title is Stuffy White Girl, because that's what he called me. <laughs> Stuffy White Girl? <laughs> <laughs> any, any, anything else you can tell me about the song? Um, basically that that's what he thinks I am, and I basically was saying that um, he needs to go write songs calling people names, and uh, I don't know, he must be pretty bored. <laughs> yeah, when's the last time he's had a hit record anyway? Yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing the, the whole record uh, when it comes out here. I like the single that you've got out now. Thanks. Sounds real good. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Do, uh, do you have any word as far as uh, the remixes go on any particular tracks? Um, let's see. Well, for anything is possible, Jelly Bean did the remix. Uh huh. And um, I mean, do you ever do you oversee it, or does he pretty much take it and run with it himself? Well, a lot of times I'll I'll check in on it, but with this, um, Jelly Bean really is in tune 
tune with what's going on in the clubs, and he did remix it at our studio at my house, so I was in and out. But um, he pretty much oversaw it because, you know, I, I tend to go more towards the real pop type vein. <laughs> and, you know, he said, look, I really want to do something different with this and make something that's that really fits in with what's going on in the clubs right now. And so I kind of purposely stayed out of the studio to really let him focus in on, on the idea he had. Well, it sounds good on the radio, too, besides the clubs. What was that? It sounds good on the radio, too, besides the clubs. Yeah, we did we did one um, remix suited more for radio and yeah. um, one suited more for the clubs. So. <laughs> well, we like it in Colorado Springs. Oh, thanks. Good. Thanks a lot, Tom. Sure. Uh, let's go back to Omaha. You ready now? I am ready. Okay, and who is it? This is Jim Snyder with KQKQ. Okay. Hi. Hi. I got a comment and two questions for you. First of all, I love the hat. Leave the hat in, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, two questions. First of all, um, how'd the seance go this year? How'd <laughs> the seance go? <laughs> I didn't get a chance to have one, unfortunately. Oh, darn. Well, that's too bad. I'm... I'm Trying to have one and just didn't come off, or uh... no, there was no time this year. Although um, a couple of years ago, we tried to contact uh, Liberace. Yeah. It does take time, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. And next question: How's your love life? How's my love life? Yeah. Well, actually, I can say that I'm dating someone right now, but nobody that any of you would know. So, um, you know, nothing serious though, because I'm kind of running around like a crazy person at the moment. Okay, well, thanks. All right. Thanks, Jim. All right, Dusty, you there? Hi, Kim. Hello. Hi, Debbie. This is Dusty Hayes from KBFM in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. Hi, Dusty. How's it going? Good. I have a couple of more uh, musically oriented questions. You were the youngest person to ever write, arrange, perform, and I believe produce a number one song with Foolish Beat. Mm-hmm. Now, did that initial success put uh, lots of pressure on you for follow-up? And then, as an addendum to that question, how do you see your career evolving over the next, say, 10 to 20 years? No, I didn't, I didn't really see that as a pressure or anything because, I mean, I just kind of do what I do, and I, I really don't um, think of those little, you know, there, there are so many titles along the way. You can, you know, so many records to break and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, as far as I go, I mean, I concentrate more on personal more on personal success. I mean, when I'm like, for instance, I'm real happy with this album, and whether it does great or whether it doesn't, it's like I'm, I still feel the same way toward it. So I don't really think of um, any kind of public record as, <laughs> right. as a pressure. And, and as far as my career evolving goes, I'm, I'm just kind of letting my music evolve naturally, and I feel like I'm changing as a person, and that's changing my music, and um, I don't want to ever intentionally try to change because I think that comes off as as too contrived and kind of foolish so <laughs> I'm just um, kind of being who I am at the at the, at any given moment and uh, you know hopefully people will be able to follow along with that well you know the, there's not many artists that stay around for years and years I know you're a big fan of Billy Joel's and of <laughs> course he's been around a long time Do you see yourself doing this forever definitely definitely and um, because I'm very into the behind the scenes end of things as far as producing and writing goes, I mean, I could see that maybe when I'm older and I don't want to go on the road as often or whatever, I can write and produce for other other artists. And, you know, I feel I have um, a lot of different things that I'm, I'm into doing, and I think that'll keep me going forever. We have a great gift, and uh, it's uh, enlightened us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dusty. Uh, Chuck from Monroe, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Hi, Debbie. It's Chuck Redden from FM 102 in Monroe, Louisiana. Hi, Chuck. How you doing? Good. Um, you wrote pretty much a lot of the first album. How many songs did you write on the upcoming album? Um, let's see. On the first two albums, I wrote all the songs. And on this album, I wrote 12 songs and co-wrote four. And um, so for me, it's funny because it was a lot of times people will co-write and then write on their own. And for me, I was kind of close to co-writing on the first two albums and with writing with Lamont I mean I really realized that I had something to learn from him and, and you know he had something to add to my music and we had ideas to bounce off one another so um, that's how that's how all of this album went down 
Now, did, do you play a lot of the instruments on the upcoming album? Do you play like the, uh, the uh, a lot of the piano and keyboard work or anything, or do you leave that all to the musicians? Well, on the ballad side, um, I do all of the piano. Uh, and um, actually, on the upbeat side, there are a couple of piano solos that I do. And, you know, I do, I do a lot of the keyboard work, mainly keyboard work. Right. Well, one more question, and then I'll uh, let somebody else get on. Um, when can we expect the, uh, the next tour? When can we expect to see you maybe down uh, in our area somewhere? Um, let's see, well, I start my tour in January in Southeast Asia, and in February I'll start touring the U.S., so probably sometime in February or March. We'll be looking forward to it. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, Mike Nelson. Yeah, hi, I'm here. I'm sorry, I was grabbing another reel of tape. This is Mike from KFTZ in Idaho Falls. How are you, Debbie? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Listen, one of the questions I had, I was in the, the supermarket the other day. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. Well, it was about a year ago. And uh, I saw the Debbie Gibson Electric Youth perfume. Uh-huh. And uh, what was that? Was that about a year ago when you first started marketing that? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, um, I was just, you know, especially if this album is successful, I'm sure it will be. Will, uh, will we be seeing Debbie Gibson uh, sleepwear and activewear and Debbie Gibson time? Uh, no, I don't want to go into overkill there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Perfume was something fun to do, and, and I donated a lot of that money to charity. In fact, we... When kids bought the perfume, they could vote on which charity they wanted their percent of, you know, the money that they were contributing to go to. Oh, really? Yeah, so it was kind of a nice way of letting kids kind of research what they wanted to give to. And, so, I mean, you know, it wasn't, it was, um, you know, partially out of fun and also for a good cause. And I, I may even do that again with this album. I see what market some some other product or... Possibility just... perfume or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they pretty, they pretty much are. Uh, the other question I had was, um, I've got this, uh, I, I guess it's a some sort of a, a package here, um, uh, you know, on your new album mm -hmm. and, and all. And it, sa it said uh, uh, things were different this time with live string and horn sections recorded in Los Angeles and live drum tracks uh, recorded in the living room. Yeah. Uh, did, did, were most of the, uh, the things you had on the first two albums, were they, what were they, just samples or how did you... Uh, yeah, I would say there was more programming on the first album, a little less on the second, and a lot less on this one. I mean, cause, because I'm a keyboard player, I like to start by programming basic tracks. But with this I... album, I found that when you start with a basic program and then you start replacing things along the way, and you, you do live drum overdubs, and you could kind of combine the program dance sound with a live thing, and, it, and, it, and you come up with something different. And, um, you know, also for certain songs that I've been writing, they just... There was no other way to do them than to do them totally live and, you know, not an ounce of programming. I see. So you came out with kind of a programmed version and then replaced it all with, with live elements. Yeah, a lot of times I do do that to get my basic idea down. And, um, yeah, and then I let it grow more live from there. And um, it was good this time because I had a lot more time to kind of think about what I wanted to do and, and to experiment more on my own because with the first two albums I, I was more under the gun with a time limit and, you know, more so with a budget and it was just it was just more difficult to get as creative as I wanted to and I feel with this album I learned a lot more, you know, about Chained. and stuff. I see, okay. Uh, the only other question I had real quickly, uh, uh, you said that you did most of the keyboards on the ballads. Do you, do you program, I mean, how are you, I've never seen you live, how are you, uh, I mean, do you do you just program that stuff in and let it play uh, when you're recording it, or do you no, on the just side, whip it right out? Oh, no, on the ballad side, I played everything live. I mean, all acoustic piano was played live, nothing programmed or anything, because I've studied classical piano for about 10 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, and um, as far as a lot of the keyboards go, again, some were, some were totally live, some were programmed. Huh. Okie dokie. <laughs> well, Debbie, I appreciate your music, and uh, thanks for spending the time with us this Thank morning. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mike. Hi, uh, Jeff McCartney, are you on? I'm here. Okay. Hello. Hi, David. Jeff McCartney at Carol Y Hot 97 in Sacramento. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Good. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, when you're not listening to Debbie Gibson music, who influences you? What do you listen to? Let's see. Well, um, lately I've probably been listening to the Mariah Carey album pretty much nonstop. And um, let's say I listen to a lot of George Michael. I listen to some Depeche Mode, some In Excess. Um, Always Billy Joel and Elton John. Oh, a wide variety. <laughs> Are you a rock fan? Mainstream dance? I'm kind of, you know, I 
I'm a fan of good songs in general, I think. I'm, I'm really not limited to one particular style. I mean, I'll sit down and watch um, Yo! MTV Raps, Headbangers Ball, and, and then I'll go put on the Barbra Streisand Classical album. I mean, I'm, I'm into a, a lot of different kinds of music. Who influenced you in the, uh, in, in the early stages? Probably a lot of what influenced my first album was Wham, for one thing, because I think that they were, I think they were just like the greatest pop band. I mean, George Michael was doing something different with them than he's doing now, and I, I mean, I really loved what he, he was doing then, because it was, I, I'm a fan of that catchy kind of uh, up positive <laughs> pop music, and also a lot of um, 50s and 60s music, again, with, with the real, um, you know, upbeat kinds of um, lyrics and, you know, the, the, those catchy hooks. <laughs> right. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Bo Robbins from Wichita, you there? Yeah, hi. Hi. Hi, Debbie. Hey, hello. Hi there. Um, hey, you know, you've written a lot of ballads, really some heart-touching ballads. Some of these things will just pull it right out. Um, where do, what do you draw on in terms of insp inspiration? You're not old enough to have your heart broken that many times. <laughs> uh, where, where does this come from? Well, I would say that on the, on the first two albums, it came more from observation and wishful thinking and kind of um, trying to figure out what was going to happen to me. <laughs> and I, I would say now I write more from experience, and now I can actually relate to the love songs that I wrote five years ago a lot better. Do your friends and family ever say, oh, God, we don't want to tell Debbie we're having problems with our relationship because the next thing you know, it'll be a top ten record? And <laughs> <laughs> that has happened, actually. <laughs> So they kind of hide that stuff from you occasionally, huh? Yeah, it's hard for, it's hard for me sometimes, too, because um, it's kind of like opening up your diary, because obviously, if you, let's say, you know, you just had your heart broken and you write a song about it, everyone's going to know exactly what it's about and exactly how you feel. But sometimes you got to put that aside and say, well, I guess from everything bad comes something good, because even from a from a bad experience could come a good song. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Follow-up question. You were talking earlier about Don Henley, and you also mentioned George Michael and some of the other people that you admire. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular person that you would really like to produce or help, or someone in particular that you'd like to write with that you've never had the opportunity to do that with? I would say, um, as I was mentioning before, I'm, I'm a big fan of Mariah Carey's, and I know that she writes and, and plays, and she's um, had a, a real extensive musical background. I would, that's someone I would, I would really love to work with, maybe co-write with. Okay, thank you very much, Debbie. Thank you. Continue success. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Bobby Christian from Colorado Springs. Hey, well, Bobby had to run on the radio, so uh, it's me, Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, fine, thanks. Uh, question for you. Um, you just mentioned some people you might like to work with. Um, besides Mojo Nixon, who would you not like to work with? Anybody in particular? Oh, that's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll just... Uh, uh, besides Mojo Nixon, that's probably my, my prime person that I, that's on my... That's your nemesis, huh? Yeah, that, that's on my, um, my list of people not to work with. Actually, it's probably the only person on there. Um, no, I don't know. Like I said, I'm pretty open to working with a lot of different people. Um, you know, that, that, that's probably the person. Okay, something that's kind of topical around here. We just had, uh, two live crew up in, uh, in Denver on, uh, Halloween night. Um, with all the controversy about those guys, how do you feel on that, out of curiosity? I actually wrote a song that I want to make a B-side to one of the singles called Band Censorship, because I have a really strong opinion on that, and that's really that the um, the lyrics that they're writing are obviously coming from, from a piece of their reality, and maybe instead of um, banning the music, people should concentrate more on the problems that, that these lyrics are coming from. And obviously, if there are a lot of people out there who and relate, then the world is in a lot more trouble than people think. <laughs> you know, if who's to you know who's to say that um, someone else's reality is is something that we shouldn't hear about? You know, I think that it, that's the whole censorship thing is real stupid. Great. Well, thanks, Debbie. That's, that's the only two questions I have for you, and we hope to see you here in the, in Denver or in the spring sometime soon. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Okay. Who do we have on from Lubbock? KZII. This is Leslie Summers. Oh, great. Hi, Leslie. Hi. Hi, Debbie. Hi. How are you? I'm doing just great. What I want to ask you, um, you're kind of probably a role model for a lot of teenagers out there, and they kind of look up to you. And with all the pressures that teenagers are under these days with drugs and, and pressures for you know, teenage sex and things like that, what advice would you give them as far as coping with these, these uh, pressures that they have? Basically, 
you have to live with yourself. And, you know, it's, it's funny because once you're out of school, you realize that that was all like a time of, you know, following the crowd and everything. And, but then after, after that's over, it's like, like I said, you have yourself and you've got to live with yourself and everything you've done. And you, should, you shouldn't live with any regrets or anything. So I really just think that you should always do what you really feel you should do in your heart. And basically, you'll have a, a, a pretty good life. That's really my philosophy on it. Well, that's great. I also want to ask you one more thing. What uh, charitable organizations would you be willing to do, like uh, work for, like singing at benefit events and things like that? Or which ones have you worked with? Let's see. I recently um, did the Carousel of Hope, which was for juvenile diabetes. And... That was real exciting, and I got to meet a lot of the kids, which was even more than, let's say, there were a lot of big-name entertainers there, and even more than that, getting to meet the kids uh, who have this disease and and just speaking with them and realizing they're just normal kids who just want to be well. And I mean, that was that was really special. And, you know, I've, I've donated money to, to child abuse organizations, to homelessness, um, to, I, I sponsor some kids. Um, from Asia, <laughs> so you know, I do I do a lot of uh, charity work, kind of on the side. That's super, Debbie. We appreciate your time this morning, and we hope you'll swing through West Texas when you're on tour. All right, thanks. Thanks, Leslie. Okay, Moon Unit. I'm here. Can you hear me? Barely hear you. Very faintly. This happened with Bette Midler last week. We're having some problem with our phones. Um, my name is Moon Trent. Actually, I'm a producer here at 104. Uh, Debbie, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. How old are you? I'm 20. Okay, I'm going to be 20 next month, so we're kind of in the same uh, age group, okay? The question that I had, I have a couple of them. Um, like my friends type of thing, when they hear the, the name Debbie Gibson, we kind of think pop queen type of thing like that, Tiffany. But you know what? I was working at a record store over the, over the, the summer, and I got a chance to read your book, Out of the Blue. And I really respect you as an artist. You've got so much talent. You've got so much going for you. And I just wanted to tell you that not everybody in my age group is, you know, if they take the time to really find out what you're all about, they'd really realize that you've got it. You mean, you've got it. Thank you. And I wanted to take the time to say that to you. Um, a couple other questions I have. I know you, I've read you wanted to do a duet with Billy Joel, whatever came of that. I know you got to meet him and whatever, but. Yeah, I performed with him live twice, actually. Have you really? That was real exciting. I've never, I haven't recorded anything with him yet. Yeah. And um, I would say, maybe for the next album, this this whole year he was on tour, so it was ca- kind of impossible to put anything together this uh-huh. time. But, um, like I said, I've met him. He's aware that I want to work with him, and so that's great. Maybe for the next album, I would still love to do that. Okay. Um. Uh. What instruments do you play? Pl- pardon me. Play besides piano. I play drums by ear. Do you really? Guitar, a little flute. Kind of a little of everything, but piano is really my main thing. Okay, one other question I had. Since I did go through and read that book, I went back and I listened to some of your albums, and I, I was really, really impressed with uh, We Could Be Together, the cover, the uh, campfire mix of that. Uh-huh. Now, I have a band called Pale out here, and we're real interested in covering that song. How do we go about doing that? <laughs> we would love to do that well, I mean, song. I guess if you're just going to cover it for live shows, you could just go ahead and do it. You know? Can we do it live? We have Debbie Gibson's permission to do this song live? Yes. Okay, go if, ahead. if we ever want to go about recording it, uh, what do we do? We have to get a hold of publishers and whatnot? Yeah, probably through Atlantic. And then maybe we could uh, hire you to be our producer, possibly? <laughs> and we could afford you? That's, hey, if I had the time to do it, that would be fun. Well, maybe we're going to have to get in touch with you. On, on the cover thing, is there any songs that you'd like to cover, or do you cover any live? Let's see, well, um, on tour I've done In the Still of the Night and Crocodile Rock. Have you really? Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow. Those are the songs I've covered. And also, a lot of Motown songs, um, Stop in the Name of Love, and a lot of Jackson 5. I, I you do these live. I on both my tours, and I change it each year, and I'd like to do that again this year. Well, that sounds great. I've never got a chance to see one of your shows, but hopefully if you're out here in the Central Valley in California, San Francisco, I can come out and take a, uh, take a look at your show and maybe meet you, Debbie. Okay. Okay, thanks. I'm glad I got to talk with you, and maybe I'll hang on to get some liners for you. All right, thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Moon. How did you get that name? Uh, it's my middle name. My parents named it. Christopher Moon Trent's my full name. Is your middle name? Well, pardon? They named you Moon Unit? They named me name. Moon. My program, my music director put Moon Unit on the list. Okay. Pardon <laughs> him. <laughs> All right, is there anybody out there that has not asked? 